It's All right, up. ready? It's messed up, dude. All right, guys. Um, so last year, guys like DJ Warnell made an impact on special teams. What's your message to a lot of these younger guys who are coming in and getting reps on special teams? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, it kind of talks about the philosophy that we had talked about during Fall Campbell last year. Um, if you're a guy that's kind of on the fringe and you're looking to make a mark in terms of the defensive depth chart, the offensive depth chart, the beauty of special teams is it's offense and defensive concepts. You just add 30 yards to it. So a guy like DJ, you see him, you know, made a bunch of big time plays right here. He gets his confidence because he gets on the field. He's able to utilize a lot of his playmaking ability. Same thing with Dalton Johnson. Um, and you get to see a bunch of young guys. You know, Genesis Smith has really showed up. Um, Kamu's really showed up. Gavin Hunter showed up. Um, you know, you just start to see these guys make plays in space, and it gives them a lot of confidence and momentum to be able to try and escalate through a depth chart on the other side of the ball, either offense or defense. So obviously you're, you're a tight ends coach, but I'm curious what got you into special teams and coaching that um, The Special teams to me is just at the end of the day, you get a chance to be able to get the pulse and be able to talk in front of the entire team. Um, the only other guy that gets to do that is Coach Fish. So I think it was always a unique deal to be able to learn the entirety of the team because I think sometimes as a position coach, you kind of get locked in and dialed into your position group and you're cordial and you get to know guys, but I get to know them on a personal level now and I get to meet with them about a variety of different things um, because of special teams. So I think that's kind of the beauty of it is you be, you're able to get amongst the entire team and have you know really, really dope relationships with defensive guys, not just offensive guys and not just tight ends. Um, I think all those guys have done a tremendous job. I think Jacob Cowan's done a remarkable job in terms of making new steps and really dialing into the technique that we're asking him to do. Um, you know, I think IT has done fantastic, just very natural um, in terms of tracking the ball on punt return. And then guys like G7, you know, um, I think he shows up as dynamic. He broke one um, today with the two rep. I th thought that was awesome to be able to see him do his thing on kickoff return. But just being able to see the skill set of all these guys and what they can uh, contribute. And again, you know, I think spring ball is fantastic for just trying different people and seeing what role they can ultimately uh, live up to and then how we continue to change and push it so there's constant competition is what we're trying to achieve. Well, I think it's usually what you've traditionally seen is a lot of guys have gone from a hold up look, you know, just really return mindset to. You know, I think last year, you know, we were making weekly cutups, and I want to say there was almost 20 to 30 block kicks a week. Um, so it's just everybody being a lot more aggressive. Obviously, you have to play the game within the game. Um, but I think that's what I've kind of seen just in terms of overall philosophy is I think people just in general um, are a lot more aggressive. So being able to make sure that we're ready for both um, and that we have some contingency plans and just continue to work because we're going to see both from a variety of the quality. We have a lot of quality special teams coordinators in the pack. So being able to see a variety of different looks is ultimately the biggest challenge for us on a daily basis. How do you think the offense did in the red zone last year? What's your evaluation of your unit in the red area? Well, I think in the red zone, um, obviously that's going to be a focal point again. And every single year we're going to make sure that we put some added emphasis. Um, the biggest jump, I think, in the red zone last year was just creating longer bodies, you know, to be able to be bigger targets. Um, but I think one of the things that you continue to see with the progression of the running backs is being able to run the ball down there as well, you know, not just throwing the ball into the end zone, but having the ability to give Mike Wiley and Jonah Coleman and DJ a lot of those guys touches um, when people try and take that away. So I think it's, you know, being multifaceted. And to me is – for my position specifically is making sure we can break tackles, you know, is making sure if we get a short contested catch um, to where you're not moving. I think Tanner's against Colorado down here on the sideline, that crossing route is fantastic. You know, if you can get yourself an opportunity, catch the ball, make the routine play, and then break one, that's what you want to see, and that's what we're continuing to emphasize moving forward. And what have you seen from Tyler Boot so far, and is it concerning for you that he hasn't attempted a 50 yard? I think at the end of the day, where we've really focused is all of his misses One more were 40 plus yards. So I think being able to put some pressure on him like we did today at practice for conditioning where all the guys are there, um, anything that we can make sure that we're addressing the issues that he has. I mean, he's made as the other day, obviously it was off a of stick, so it's a little bit of fantasy land, but he made a 68 yarder. Oh, wow. 
So it, there's leg behind there, but we just want to make sure that while we're balancing and trying to test out how far we can hit it, we got to make sure we're more consistent on the looks and the kicks that uh, Coach Fish is going to ask us to be able to go operate on. So really an emphasis in the 40 plus range, but making sure that we don't lose sight of the routine kicks that he was fantastic at has been 100% everything inside 40 in his career. And then Tanner is back Last in question. practices, but how important was that for the other guys to get those first two I think it's crucial. I think it's absolutely crucial is making sure that, you know, there really isn't ones and twos. You know, it really is a lot of the time making sure that you get as guys like Tyler Powell and guys like Key and guys like Berto reps with the ones um, to be able to see how they communicate, how they operate within that team setting. Um, but I think any time you're, that you're working in between ones and twos and you have a couple different guys that can do that, I think that's a fantastic thing for Dev. All right, that's our time. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate